Welcome, Aaron Radcliffe here from nomadsnation.com where we do backpack reviews. And today, we're doing an Everyman Hideout Backpack Review. In today's review, I'm gonna show you everything that you need to know about the Everyman Hideout Backpack. We're gonna talk about the entirety of the bag. We're gonna talk about the specs, the design, the feel, the front of the pack, the middle of the pack, the back of the pack. And most importantly, at the end of the video, I'll let you know who I think this pack is exactly for. And if it's not for you, I'll let you know what pack is for you. Here at Nomads Nation, our backpack reviews are a little bit different. I'm currently based in Vietnam, so we're gonna take the Everyman Hideout through the streets of Ho Chi Minh City so you can see the way that this backpack looks, feels, and functions in a stellar, awesome, really cool urban environment. And guys, finally, if you like backpack reviews, definitely subscribe, or at the very least, give our video a like. It gives us a boost in the YouTube algorithm, which means that more people can see us. I'm fucking ready. You fucking ready? I'm fucking ready. Let's fucking go. Let's chat about some specs of the Everyman Hideout. Now, I wanna be really upfront here. This backpack is a ripoff. Yeah, I said it, I'm coming out, I'm coming out hot. It's a hot take, I'm, I'm, I'm guns blazing. But truth be told, I actually really like the Everyman Hideout backpack, but not at the price point. Why? Because the Everyman Hideout costs 220 US dollars. Now, to clarify, I don't mind backpack companies charging that much for a backpack. In fact, some of my favorite backpacks are 300 plus dollars. The value can absolutely be there. But in my opinion, for the Everyman Hideout, the value is not there. Were this backpack to be priced around the $120 to $150 range, different story. I'd be singing this bag's praises. But it's not. $220 US dollars, it's overpriced, and I'm about to tell you why. And the other spec to be aware of, aside from the price, is the size. This is a 24 liter backpack. Now, although I've said some negative things about this, there's a lot of positives I'll talk about the Everyman Hideout, and one of which is its capacity. I think 24 liters is a great size, and it's a big 24 liters. Like, it actually feels a little bit more like 30 liters, to be honest. For some context, 24 liters is great for a day pack. 24 liters is that perfect sweet spot for a backpack that you wanna carry every day, whether it's from home to work, work to the gym, the gym to the brothel. I don't know what you do with your time, but if you're looking for some way to just get around on a day-by-day -day basis, this is your guy. But 24 liters is definitely gonna be way too small for a travel backpack, and like long-term travel. If you're a super minimalist traveler, you can probably get by with this on a weekend trip, no problem. A few clothes, a jacket in there, bottle of whiskey, you're good to go. But anything more than that, and this is gonna be way too small. Next up, let's chat about the way that the Everyman Hideout backpack feels. Now with feel, there's a few different things that I wanna take into consideration. First, exterior materials. The Everyman Hideout uses two exterior materials, both of which I'm big fans of. First of which, we have ballistic nylon. Ballistic nylon is awesome. I am so in love with ballistic nylon, and so are backpack companies as a whole. That's because it looks good, it feels good, and it's gonna last a long time. Also on the exterior, we have PVC. This is gonna give it like a leathery sort of a look, which I like a lot because look at this. You have the ballistic nylon, which has like a rougher sort of a scaly vibe to it. And then it kind of gets neutralized with this leathery PVC. This is a design choice that I've seen on a few different backpacks and I love it. Um, namely, the Wandered Provokey, Provoke, however the it's pronounced, uh, 21 and 31. They do a tarpaulin with a ballistic nylon. I'll put a link to that review below. It's a much better backpack than this. <laughs> Sorry, buddy. So overall, exterior materials are great. As for the feel of the interior materials, not as great. We'll get into this a bit more when we actually go inside the main compartment and the tech compartment of the bag, but just know as I'm currently discussing the feel, the interior materials are meh. Next up for the feel, let's chat about the zippers. And actually, yeah, come over here. So check this out. Now, this is really interesting. The Everyman Hideout has one of the most bizarre slash cool slash memorable zipper situations that my eyes have ever seen. 
Look at how big and chunky these zippers are. The teeth on these things, I'm, I'm gonna call this backpack jaws, okay? If you get your finger cut in there, it's gonna, it's gonna chop it right off. And this chunky zipperage is replicated throughout the entirety of the bag. Look at, look at these chompers, man. This is easily the chunkiest, biggest, most zippery backpack I've ever seen. We'll get a little bit more into the look of those zippers in the next section, but for the feel of them, they feel pretty good. Um, they're not like a brand name like YKK zippers or anything like that, but they are still really nice. They zip pretty well. They get a little snagged on these side corners, um, but we'll get into that when I talk about the middle compartment of this bag. But more or less for the feel of the zippers, they're smooth, they're smooth. They're not exceptional, but they are. Right. And last for the feel, let's chat about the comfort of the Everyman hideout. It's okay. Like I said, if this backpack was priced at a point that I thought was more reasonable, 100, 150 max, I'd be okay with the comfort. But at $220, the comfort is just unacceptable. I'm not saying that the comfort is terrible. It's not uncomfortable. It's just not an acceptable level of comfort for the price point. Hydration, very important. Okay, let's talk about the style of the Everyman Hideout. Even though I'm ultimately giving this backpack a negative review, and I'm gonna really say some mean things about it when we get on the inside. Uh, actually though, the style is something I quite like. There's a few reasons for that. Number one, the things that we talked about in the last section. The materials, I love this ballistic nylon mixed with that little PVC on the bottom. It's got this like sleek yet rugged sort of a look to it. I'm a big fan of that combo. But the biggest reason why I'm a fan of the style of this backpack is because of its shape. Most backpacks have like a boxy sort of a shape to them, you know, and boxes aren't really that sexy. But the Everyman Hideout backpack has implemented a sort of cylinder design. See right here, it's flat on the back, but it curves its way around. It's almost like a half a moon. You got a semicircle. While there is definitely some sacrificed functionality to get this sort of half moon design, I think it looks so cool, man. It's like really cool. I don't know why, but I think it's awesome. I think just because there's not a lot of backpacks that have that kind of a shape going for it, where it has like this, it almost looks like a torso. It's almost like a person. Are you, are you a real boy? So because of that, like I said, while I am critical of this bag, I think that the style of it is like really cool. I think it stands out. And that's why I can't say I don't recommend this bag at all. Because some people are just gonna see this style, that cool ass cylinder shape and be like, dude, I don't give a fuck about that price. Like that is for me. But we will chat about that a little bit later. You, me, let's talk about the front of the Everyman Hideout. Now, really only two things to talk about here. Now, the first of which is this big old zipper straight down the middle. As I've mentioned, these zippers are the biggest and chunkiest mother I have ever seen. And some people are gonna love that look, man. Like some people just like that chunky zipper look. And if you like the chunky zipper look, I got some chunky zippers for you. Note that this zipper is a little bit different than other zippers. A lot of competitors will have like a waterproof ceiling there, which will give that zipper sort of a sleeker, leathery sort of a look. Not every man though, you just got this teethy chunky thing and that's it. Also with these zippers is something really interesting to take into consideration and that's this little like zipper threesome you have going on here. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So the way that you get into the main compartment is through either a side opening on either side, which we'll discuss in the next section, or the middle zipper right there. And they meet in the middle for this little like trifecta of zippers. Now I got a good friend who's like a backpack nerd like me and the mere sight of this made him nauseous. He was like, wait, what do you mean? The three zippers just like meet in the middle like that? Are you serious and similarly I was like weirded out by it but I'll be honest as I've had more time with the backpack I actually don't mind it it works like these things never like they never move um, although you have this little like you know 
You know what I'm talking about, what it looks like. <laughs> and while it might not be the most aesthetically pleasing solution, it's actually pretty functional. But if that pisses you off, believe me, I understand why. And for the last part of the front, let's talk about this quick access compartment. Now for a quick access compartment, this guy is pretty big. Like look at this thing, like, you know, I, I could probably stick my head in there. Yeah, definitely. This is a good spot for your things like your wallet, uh, maybe AirPods, phone charger, definitely a spot for your key because one cool part about this bag is bring it in a little closer, we've got a key holder that is removable. I am always a huge fan of key rings that are removable, okay? Cause think about it, you have your bag, you wanna unlock your door, I don't wanna like, bring this all the way to the door. I want to pop it out, unlock the door, and snap it back into place. That is what the Everyman hideout gives you is with this removable key holder, key ring thingamajogger. But the annoying part is that it's all the way in the back. Like the whole point of a key ring is easy, quick access, and it's all the way in the back. It's in this back corner back here. So you're getting to your apartment after a long day volunteering at the local orphanage, you know, and you open this thing up and you're trying to find your key and you gotta like really reach all the way back there. It's a hassle. Also the other annoying thing about this pocket is that the back pocket cuts into it. So check this out. If I put my fake ass f***ing Ray-Bans in there, right? Like, it's like interfering with the rest of the pockets. This is just poor design and a lack of craftsmanship and just very little effort and it's just like WTF, man. So overall, this pocket's good because it's big, but aside from that, everything else about it sucks. Bye. Sick, bro. Come on, man. You good, bro? All right. Okay, middle of the pack. First up, we got some compression straps on the side. My view on compression straps is usually pretty consistent. They just are kind of straps that compress. But the cool thing about these compression straps is I actually think they add to the aesthetic of the bag because they do not serve a functional purpose. Like, look at this. If you actually start to compress the bag, it gets all squishy and the entire aesthetic is f***ed up. But with the compression strap, it kind of adds like a nice little flow to the bag. It adds a nice little look. I think it helps with the entire cylinder shape. Looking at the sides too, something very interesting here, especially for a day pack, no water bottle holder. Yet again, I assume just like the compression straps, it was a design choice. They're like, dude, we got this like cylinder shape. If we put the water bottle holder in there, it'll f with that. So uh, no water bottle holder. It's not the end of the world. It's just no water bottle holder. Next. Now both the sides of the Everyman hideout are basically the same minus one variation. This weak ass nylon handle. If you've watched my backpack reviews, you know I'm really, really into handles. They're very, very important for the functionality and the quick access of using a backpack. And this thing is just weak sauce. They literally just took a piece of nylon and basically stapled in there and said, you now have a side handle. And that is perfectly acceptable behavior for a backpack that is $85, but it is completely unacceptable in my most humble of opinions for a backpack that is $230. But while I'm critical of this side handle, what they did on the top handle is a little more interesting. So if you look at the top handle, you notice it's basically the exact same thing, just a nylon strap, but they give you this cool like leather looking dude. And this cool like leather looking dude just pops right into place there and it creates actually a handle that I quite like. It's not the best handle in the game, but it's, it's, it's advertised as leather. It feels great. It's got the logo there in a very subtle yet catchy way. And it feels good, it's easy to grab. It's easy for me to tear into this backpack and talk shit about it, but I like what they did with the handle. I wish that they would have included one of these right there. It would have been consistent for the design and it would have shown that they cared a little bit more about actually making this functional. So let's start to kind of make our way inside the backpack. And we have these side access zippers. Now, these are important because it's a part of the whole cylinder half moon shape. These guys can be tough. Like, like, look at this. Like, I'm not even playing. Oh, tea time. BRB. I'm back. So as I was saying, as cool as the cylinder looks, this side access is really, there's, there's just a functionality with it that kind of sucks because these zippers are going to get stuck, like just straight up stuck for sometimes minutes at a time. Like I, I'm stuck right now, I'm stuck. Stage five stuck. 
Stage five stuck. It's all not doom and gloom. Let's jump into the actual main compartment. Like I said, we have the three openings, side on the top, side on the top, and then this middle right there. And then we have the main compartment, which I said before is really big. And honestly, you can fit a ton of stuff in there. Like it's more than enough for a day pack. And like I said, you can definitely get away with a weekend trip or maybe even a week trip if you're a super light packer. So I got all my day stuff in there. I got reading materials, water bottle, jacket, laptop stand, my uh, tech pouch from Peak Design. I'll put a link to this in the bottom. And yeah, so now you can see the inside. And like I said, it's got a really good capacity to it. It's big, it's hollowed out, it's a nice space. I really like the inside of this pack. Most of it, but let's talk about it. Now within this main compartment, there's two things to really chat about. Let's first chat about this back panel. This is a pretty cool back panel. You got some additional organization back there, pen holders, a uh, spot for a wallet, spot for a passport. You can, uh, you got this big ass pocket right there. It's good for a notebook. Okay, it's actually, it's, it's pretty beefy back there. You can fit a bunch of stuff. And then you've got this inconspicuous pocket at the top, which also runs pretty deep, uh, which I like to keep like some spare cash in, um, really whatever you want. It's like a little vault back there, pretty cool. This side back panel is pretty well designed. Um, it's got, you know, a decent amount of functionality to it. It's nice to have when you load it up and you have tons of stuff in this back panel and in all these pockets, it gets really weighed down. So I would recommend keeping it light if you do pack this, but more or less, it's nice to have. And then the other part, organize yourself, Aaron. My God, my slob. The other parts taken into consideration are these side pockets. Now, with the shape of this bag, these side pockets can be a little difficult to get into, especially on the bottom. But as you can see here, basically what these are is additional pockets on the sides. I don't love these side pockets. Here's why. While it is nice to have extra side pockets, the really main selling point of the Everyman Hideout backpack to me is that cylinder shape. And when you start loading these side pockets up with shit, the shape is so compromised. Like the, it just starts bulking out, you know, and just starts getting like, like this. And, and, and it kind of loses that awesome, sexy cylinder. One of the few things that it actually has going for it. But having said that, if you pack it light and you keep things like an external battery or like a phone charger in there uh, and like light things of that nature, I think that these pockets work pretty well. All right, for the last part of the review, before we take it back to the co-working space, let's take a look at the back of the pack. First up is the back padding. And when I say the back padding, I specifically am referring to the lack of any back padding. See, there's nothing. There's no foam, there's no cushion. It is just a flat panel. Don't get me wrong, in my opinion, Perfectly acceptable from a $50 to $100 backpack. But for a $220 backpack, I expect there to be a beautiful, comfortable back panel. There's nothing on this. Yeah, now that I'm really thinking about it, this is not gonna be good for every man. Sorry guys, I just gotta be honest. Just like the back padding, the shoulder straps, they're okay. They're not as bad as the back padding, like at least there's a little bit of cushion that was put into this guy. So um, they're pretty comfy to wear. They just feel cheap though, man. Staying in line with the shoulder straps, we have a sternum strap. Some pros and some cons. Pros are is that it's removable. You can clip it or unclip it with this little hook right there. Whether or not you like a sternum strap, you can pop it on or pop it off. Also, it has a little bit of elasticity. So if you've got like an Arnold Schwarzenegger like chest, you know, it can like, it'll cover the whole thing. On the bad side though, I'm a fan of a dangle free experience. And this has got the dangle in it and it just kind of dangles down and that your boy off. Um, I just wish you had one of those little nylon circle thingy-majoggers. You could just pop it in and you'd have a dangle free experience. But overall, not a bad sternum strap. Interesting right here and true story, I just discovered this pocket like 12 seconds ago. This is a little hidden pocket right here. Uh, this is good for any valuables, specifically maybe like a passport or a wallet could go good in there. And if you don't pack the bag too much, you could definitely fit a fifth of tequila in there. All right, but now let's take it inside to a very lackluster tech compartment. Wah! 
On the back side of the tech compartment, there's nothing, which I'm actually okay with. Like, I never, like, other backpacks will have, like, pockets here or other things, and I think it's kind of overkill, so I'm cool with the minimalism, this sort of simplicity, and just having a regular panel there. I'm fine with that. What I am less fine with, though, is everything that's happening here. Basically, you've got a nylon strap, laptop holder, and then a smaller holder right here, which is good for like a tablet or a notebook. Unfortunately though, it's just made of weak ass materials. This whole compartment just in general, it feels loose, it feels cheap, it feels lackluster. Like I said, it's not bad for a $50 backpack, but if you're charging 220, like I want my tech compartment to be like state of the art. Think of what some of the competition does in the same price range. Like if you use like um, the Wandered uh, tech compartment, Boundary Supply, Manal, Nomadic. These dudes are putting time, money, and attention into their tech compartments to make sure that they're of the highest quality because it's protecting your most important gear, your most important piece of gear, your fucking laptop. And unfortunately, you just don't get any of that with this bag. It'll hold your laptop in place. That's about it. Up right here too, we have a quick access back pocket. Um, only good things to say about this pocket actually. Uh, it's made with a really, really nice material, a soft linen, super nice, good for fragile stuff. That's why it's good for sunglasses, uh, cell phone, things of that nature. I like this pocket. Let us conclude the Everyman Hideout review with the pros and the cons and who I think this backpack is perfect for and who it's not for. Overall pro number one of the Everyman Hideout is its badass cylinder shape. Now, no, it's not very full right now, so you've got like some lumpage going on, but when this thing is packed out, the shape looks great and it is one of the more memorable and unique shapes on a backpack that I've ever seen. Honestly, I love the shape. I think it's so cool and unique. I haven't seen really any other backpacks try and do the same thing. Overall pro number two is going to be the exterior materials and the look that it gives. The exterior materials are ballistic nylon. Now ballistic nylon is a pretty popular choice in the backpack community, especially like the more like urban style travel packs. And that's because it's durable and it looks awesome. So any backpack that uses ballistic nylon, I'm gonna be a big fan of. The Everman Hideout uses it. It looks great, it feels great. Ballistic nylon for the win. And my third pro is, that's it, just the two. Now let's chat about the cons of the Everyman Hideout. Before I jump into the negatives, I wanna say I'm sorry. Like I really wanted to like this backpack. I was super stoked to get it, but I gotta be honest with my peeps and the cons just outweigh the pros tenfold for this bag. Overall pro number one is that it is absolutely incredibly overpriced. This backpack costs 229 US dollars. And based on my amateur but experienced perspective on reviewing backpacks and understanding kind of what goes into the process and the materials, I have to think that this backpack should be half the price. Were this backpack marked at around 80, maybe even 120, God, maybe even 150, I could let it slide. But $229, it's just, it's not that it's wrong, it's just that for the same price, you can get a backpack that is 20, thousand times better. All right, let's keep the train rolling. Overall con number two, let's move it to the back of the Everyman hideout. And let's talk about the back padding. And by back padding, I mean the lack of back padding. This is a $230 backpack without any padding. This is a $230 backpack without any ventilation. This is a $230 backpack that just has a slab and that is it. I don't get it. And overall con number three is this tech compartment, which as I mentioned is way too basic, way too flimsy. It feels, it's just not somewhere that I want to keep a MacBook Pro or any laptop or anything. It feels cheap and you know, if this is an urban style sort of travel backpack, like this should be one of the sections that has the most love. Considering all of the pros and the cons with the Everyman Hideout, I give it an overall score of 2.5 out of five. And finally, let's talk about who this pack is perfect for and who it ain't perfect for. This pack is perfect for you if you 
love the cylinder shape. Like I said, the one big credit that I'll give this backpack for is like it seemed like they did try to innovate. You got this cylinder shape, which is really unique and no water bottle holders on either side kind of help emphasize that roundness without anything like kind of getting in the way of that. And these cool compression straps actually kind of work with it. It's a really cool shape. It's a little flat right now, but I'm telling you when it's packed out, it looks dope. So here's the deal. If you're into the shape and you're like, Aaron, I don't give a shit about the functionality. I don't give a shit about the features. I don't give a shit about the 220. I'd pay $2,020. I don't care. This backpack speaks to me. Then you have my blessing, you can buy it, you know what you're getting yourself into, and the cylinder shape is difficult to come across. So if that sounds like you, please use the link below, it'll bring you to the website. This backpack is also perfect for absolutely nobody. But if you're really into the shape and you accept all the negatives that come with it, including the insanely high cost, then that's fine. Like I said, you have my blessing, but that's the only situation I could ever see rationalizing getting this backpack. So now let's chat about who this backpack is not for and spoiler alert, it's a little bit longer of a list. This backpack is not for you if you want a great everyday carry pack. At the end of the day, the everyday hideout is an okay backpack at an insanely high price. For the same price, you can do so much better. I'm gonna blow your mind with all of the awesome day packs that you can get that are around the same price range. If you're looking for a badass day pack, I've even got ones that even use the same ballistic materials. Check the links below. This backpack is also not for you if you're looking for a large travel pack. If you're looking for a larger travel pack, check the links below. It's a, it, I, you have to understand with the links below, I'm constantly updating them, okay? So my number one recommendations for alternative backpacks are always going to be there and those recs are always coming in fresh and hot. So check the links below for the best travel pack recommendations, packs that are like in the 30 to 50 liter range. And finally, this is not the pack for you if you're looking for a photographer backpack. While I could totally see you like cruising through the streets of Toronto with this and being like, oh my God, that bridge inspires me. And that's cool, this backpack's got a dope ass look to it. But there are backpacks that are specifically designed for your DSLR lifestyle. So if you're in the market for a backpack that can suit your photography needs, then check the links below. I got some killer brands down there, some of which are better and cheaper. And I hope that I did not discourage you from getting a backpack today. I just hope that I can inspire you to find one that works at a price point that works for you. If you're here watching this video, it's because you were hoping this would be the backpack for you, but it's probably not, but that's okay because I got mad recommendations below. So check those links and I guarantee you will find the backpack of your dreams. Also, if you're still here, it probably means that you are like me. Not that you wear fake glasses, but that you like backpacks. Or maybe you wear fake glasses as well, I don't know. If you wear fake glasses and you like backpacks, then we're like soulmates, dude. But if you like backpacks, definitely hit the like button on this video. It'll help with the growth of our channel. Most importantly, subscribe. Then you'll get notified anytime we do awesome ass backpacks and I'll still be wearing my fake glasses. Travel on nomads. I'll see you next time. Take one. Nice. Where's the mosquito? Did you get it? <laughs> Boris the bug killer. Boris the mosquito slayer. <laughs> yeah, you have to practice your Russian accent. You're with German now. <laughs> yeah. My, my, let me uh, let me see. My da da zdrasbuite. My Russian accent. It might be a little cliche, but it is not too terrible. <laughs> yeah, is all right. Should I do this review in my Russian accent? Hello, Alex Nikshchev here. <laughs> my name is Dmitri. Dmitri Pe Prekov. Is <laughs> I'm just the Prushkana Parna. <laughs> I'm just making up words. This is very offensive. Do not publish this. <laughs> Sorry. I've offended Boris. Okay, we're good and you're in. Mm -hmm. Ah, ready. <laughs>